streaming. All right. What's going on, guys? We in here. We out ya. As the niggas say in the streets. All right, what's up? What is shirt? I look like I look I work with this shirt, man. I look like a Best Buy employee and shit. All right, but what's up, man? We're here. We are here. <coughs> Excuse me. We are here, ladies and gentlemen. Let me make sure I'm I'm good to go. All right. All right, we're here. Everybody come on in this damn room. Everybody come on in this room. I'm a little late. I'm a little late, like 40 minutes late. 40 minutes late, but I'm here. I'm here, family. Everybody come on in. The room is about to get packed. Right on time. That's right. That's right. We've got a lot to talk about tonight. <clears throat> You say Yvette Carnell made up the DOS term. That's a good term. I take my hat off to her. The DOS term is a very good term. I actually like that. Descendants of slaves or descendants of slavery. Very good term. Now, I like that term. You know, I have my differences with with Yvette Carnell, but sometimes people do good things. I, I, I like that term. American DOS, descendants of slaves, descendants of slavery. All right. I'm here. I'm here. That's a very good codified term. I like that. And we need to jump on terms like that. You dig? Shout out to Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore. One thing I do commend them about, and I told him I've seen some of his videos. He brings good information. You know, they speak up for the African or the Black American experience. Um, I'm 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 at a location. I don't want to tell where I am. You know, I'm 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 at the, I'm at one of the spots. I'm 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 at one of the spots. What's up, Fairfield, Alabama? I used to kick it out there in Fairfield. I had me a little. Back when I was a kid, I had a couple of little country breezies out there in Fairfield. But um, what up, Mink Slide? I don't know when Mink Slide is coming to Detroit. How many of you guys got your Atlanta tickets to join us for the Mink Slide concert in Atlanta? How many of you guys have your tickets for Atlanta? If you got your Atlanta tickets, press 1. What's up? Shout out to Harlem. Shout out to Harlem. You dig? <clears throat> I know a lot of folks want us to come to different cities. It, it just takes a lot to really go on the road like that. Even doing this concert in Atlanta, just getting everybody organized. I got a big old ass band. I got dancers. I mean, we're we going out like goddamn MC Hammer. So it's a lot of people. So, And plus, I'm in the middle of doing a movie. So we're going to really make this Atlanta show a real big deal and really rock out in Atlanta for the time being. I don't know when we'll do some more joints, but... You know, I wanted to take the time out to really go down to Atlanta and really represent. So everybody should come down to Atlanta. All my Detroit people, y'all make that trip. It's going to be nice and fun. Y'all be around some real good people. So y'all make that trip down to Atlanta December 22nd to see Mink Slide and the APX Live. What's up, N um, Nisa? Shout out to Nisa. But we're going we're gonna to have... Um, a real good conversation tonight. We're going to be in the, we, we got a, a real deep conversation to have tonight. And we're going to have to ask a serious, serious question. Yeah, yeah, Atlanta trips are real. Man, Atlanta, you get two and three hundred dollar round trip tickets to Atlanta. Y'all need to come out to Atlanta and just make it a weekend. Come join us. It's going to be popping. You say, what makes Joe Rogan a white supremacist? I'm not Jordan. Let's be clear. I'm not saying Joe Rogan is a white supremacist. I don't know that. I don't think he has admitted to being a white supremacist. What's up, Boswell? But many of us suspect that he could be. Many of us suspect that he could be. Not saying that he is, but, you know, based on his associations, based on the people he's associated with, based on many questionable, questionable things that he has said, many of us suspect that he could be. Many suspect that he could be. Black folks are really well. Shout out to Atlanta. I, you know, I got a lot of love for Atlanta. I got a lot of love for Atlanta. That's why we're doing the concert down there. 
But um, the question is, family, we, we're going to have a think tank on today's show because things are getting heavy for black people. We got to be on the empowerment train, the black empowerment train. In order to be on that black empowerment train, we have to challenge and combat and replace the system of white supremacy constantly. We have to constantly stay on the neck of white supremacy. We got to get off this thing, but we tag them a little bit, make a little noise. They give us a couple of crumbs and then we good. We got to stay on the neck of white supremacy until we replace that system with justice. This is why I don't let up off white supremacy. I call it out in every form. A lot of black people, we're so desperate to be liked and loved by the dominant society. Black people will allow white supremacy to fester in different forms. And there's the Democratic side of white supremacy. And there's the Republican side, which is all one and the same. You have good cop, bad cop. They've been playing this good cop, bad cop game with us for the longest. One thing that they've done, the white supremacists, they've learned how to get black people to sign on to their own demise. All right? They've gotten us to sign on to our own demise. And when they do that, it's very difficult for you to call them out because they'll blame you. When you say, hey, man, you just ran a trick on me. No, no, you wanted this. No black person, you wanted this. For example, this is why I want to talk with the Clintons. When, when, when Hillary was running for, for Trump last time and um, Bill was out there campaigning with her, some people were confronting him about them damn drug laws. And then he, he went full white supremacist. Bill Clinton went full white supremacist. He said, wait a minute. There were all these 13-year-old crackheads out here. And it was people in the black community, it was the black leaders who wanted me to do something about it. It was the black leaders who wanted me to get tough on them. Do y'all remember when he said that slick ass shit? He went all the way out on that one. That's why any, anybody can, who co-signs the Clintons, well, you, you need to just kill yourself. He was sitting up here talking about it's, it's the black leaders who wanted all those tough jail laws. They got tired of getting robbed by those 13-year-old crackheads. See, they'll push out their hand-picked Negroes to do the dirty work for them. And then when it's time to get in that white supremacist's ass, they blame the Negro that they pushed out. It, it, it was him. See, it wasn't us. It was him. He wanted it. We got to watch out for these hand-picked Negroes that's being paraded in front of us. And as we see, this is voting season now. We've been asking people what's in it for black people. The only thing they keep saying to us is, well, we got uh, about 400 different black people running for elected office. Okay. Yeah, we got... A black person running for governor here. What's in it for black people? Oh, we got a black person running for governor in Atlanta. We're, sh we're trying to show diversity. What the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? They're playing this whack-ass game with us. And fortunately, there are a lot of young black people who are getting hip to the game because we're letting them know how to be hip to the game. We're letting them know how to be hip to the game. The, uh, the, uh, everything is symbolic. Everything, and, and I, I talked about this on my last show the other day. Their only pitch for black folks, they're trying to use the ancestor guilt trip. Just like Oprah. You better, you, you don't let your ancestors down. If your ancestors fought to vote, don't let them down. They've been running that ancestor thing. Um, the sister running for Governor Stacey Abrams did the same thing. I tweeted and I, I retweeted Stacey Abrams because she was on that ancestor shit. And I retweeted her and made a comment. I said, hey, Democrats, y'all need to shout out to my man, Demario Wilson. Shout out for the donation, brother. 
I tweeted her or retweeted her and I left a message and left a comment and I said, hey, Democrats, y'all need to chill out with that whole ancestor routine. That's not going to work. Y'all have to do something tangible for the black voters. Do you know Stacey Abrams deleted her tweet after I did that? Stacey Abrams, she deleted her tweet. She deleted that tweet. I want y'all to understand they've been playing good cop, bad cop with us. They, they're doing these lectures to black people and look at the language they're using. They ain't talking about doing shit for black society. Now, when they get around the LGBT community, the Hispanics and all these groups, they're getting real specific about certain policies they're going to push for these people. Because the white supremacists are backing these Negroes and they're funding them to push that agenda. They keep talking about all the policies, policies, policies they're going to put together for these other groups. When they get around us, I remember when I got beat down in Selma. That's what we get. We get vote for me because I got my ass whooped in Selma. The other day I was clowning John Lewis. The very next day he did another speech talking the same shit. Literally the very next day after I did my broadcast, literally, literally the next day, he did another I got my ass whooped in Selma speech. Let me play it. For those who did not see it, this is John Lewis, hold on. I gave a little blood on that bridge in Selma 53 years ago. I almost died. Some of my friends and colleagues were murdered in Mississippi and other places. I'm not asking any of you to give any blood. I'm just asking you to go and vote like you never voted before. We have to vote. Look, that's all he does. He ain't saying vote nothing. It's the most powerful, most powerful, nonviolent instrument or tool we have in a democratic society. The democratic, what are you talking about? The democratic society. He's literally not saying nothing. Literally, I got my ass whooped. So go vote. Vote. Get out there in a democratic society and, and vote. So I'm clowning. I'm clowning. I am clowning. I'm clowning John Lewis because that's some shit where he's being pushed by outsiders. John Lewis been doing this routine and yes, I'm clowning. Yes, I'm clowning. Hold on. John Lewis is a mascot. He's a mascot for white liberals. That's all he is. Did y'all see the shit where he's dancing? They had him all dancing and shit. It was just a fucking plantation celebration. See, when it comes to black folks, all of a sudden, everybody starts dancing. That's what Roland Martin was dancing with Hillary. You know, it becomes a plantation celebration. Hold on. Look, look, hold on. Let me play the video of him dancing. Hold on. I put some mink slide to make it hot, though. Look at him just cutting a jig. Look at this. <laughs> Get it, John. Get it, nigga. Well, them ass whippings didn't stop the moves, though, did it? <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> so he out there just cutting the jig plantation celebration. Oh my God. See when it comes to us, when it comes to black folks, all of a sudden we gotta pull the goddamn banjo out. Every time it comes to black people getting something, I got beaten so my vote. Put the music on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. 
Hillary got to do the nay nay and the Dougie. Every time they come around us, then it becomes entertainment. It becomes coon train time. Give me a break, man. <laughs> you got to do the coon hustle when you come around black folks. Man. I don't look, look, we got to get off this thing where we giving props to all the so-called ancestors. Some of these motherfuckers ain't ancestors. Some of these just old niggas. You, you understand? We got to get, listen to me. So look, I, I posted these videos on my Instagram. Y'all need to follow me on Instagram at Tariq um, um, Elite. And you know, you got a couple of niggas in there talking this dumb shit. Oh, that's disrespectful. You being disrespectful to an ancestor. You're being disrespectful to a legend. They appear talking this dumb shit. How dare you talk that way about John Lewis? You standing on the shoulders of John Lewis. Who? Who's standing on the shoulders of John Lewis? I've had a couple of people talking about we standing on the shoulders of John Lewis. If it wasn't for John Lewis, we wouldn't be able to be here and do certain things. Like what? What, what, what did John Lewis do? No, we're going to clear this bull. Let's, let's stop with the, 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 the symbolisms and bullshit. What the fuck did John Lewis do besides get his ass whooped on Edmund Pettit Bridge and sell him? What did John Lewis do besides get his ass whooped on the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. That's not even being disrespectful. That's just that's, well, that's keeping it 100. Uh, all that sacrificial slave bullshit. They love pulling that. They love pulling him out because he's very non-threatening. He gets out there talking about non-violence. He gets out there talking about uh, uh, we all in this together. We gonna get in good trouble. We all. I, I got beat. I I got beaten. Went to jail so many times. And he sounds like a slave a little bit. That's just keeping it 100. I'm not here for political correctness right now. That's why white people love him. That's why they parade him around. He is a mascot of the docile, um, um, loyal slave that they love. That sacrificial slave who risks his dignity, but he has so much moral strength. They love a nigga like that. Fuck that. They love that Uncle Ben, Uncle Tom. See, that's what Uncle Tom's cabin was about that. About Uncle Tom sacrificing his life. A sacrificial slave. He's doing the right thing. Fuck that. Do you understand me? Fuck that moral shit. Let's get off that moral garbage. That ain't working for us. Everybody's immoral. Everybody's doing us dirty. But we got to take the moral high road. It's that Obama-Michelle bullshit. When they go low, we go high. Fuck going high. We need to go equal. Treat everybody else the same way they treat us. I'm done with the moral high road bullshit. It ain't working. I ain't John fucking Lewis. I ain't about to get my ass whooped for all these other groups so they can turn around and shit on American DOS. What the hell did John Lewis do that we were standing on his shoulders? He didn't do nothing to get his ass whooped in Selma. That's why he can only talk about that. Whenever you see him, he can't talk about nothing, no legislation that he got done. See, a lot of niggas try to piggyback off Dr. King and other people. No, 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 no. You ain't doing that. You ain't no Dr. King, brother. John Lewis ain't Dr. King. I'm not giving him props for the stuff Dr. King did and sacrificed his life with. I'm not giving niggas who was around Dr. King props. One reason I ain't doing that, because Dr. King, most of the niggas around him were goddamn informants. That's number one. Most of the niggas who were around Dr. King were informants. They were working with the government to wipe him the fuck out. So fuck most of them niggas off rip. Do you understand me? You don't get no props because you was with Dr. King. Half y'all niggas set him up. Dirty ass niggas. Half them niggas was working with the fucking government against Dr. King. Every year, there's some new nigga that came out. They done pulled his FBI file and see he was on the damn payroll. Fuck them niggas, man. Y'all don't let them run that game on y'all, family. Some of these niggas are real slick and dirty. 
and they own the payroll, and they've been undermining black society since the 1960s. I don't owe them niggas shit. You dig? A lot of them old boule niggas, all of them. Fuck them, dude. Niggas are cooning, and we calling you out for your cooning. We calling you out for your cooning. And John Lewis, he ain't doing nothing for black society now. All he's doing is being a mascot for other groups, ushering other groups in, trying to compare the black American struggle with all these other groups. You dig? So we're going to have to start trimming the fat as far as that. We're going to have to start calling out the John Lewis's and all these people, along with the white supremacists, because, again, we can tackle the white supremacists, but there's Negroes within black society that we got to start looking into and backing away from and not letting them run that okie doke on us. That's why with the whole voting thing, I've been like telling people, if they're not going to put a black agenda on the table, these people are your enemy. We ain't out here to vote just to be voting. They got LGBT on the table. And if you look at Stacey Abrams and the other dude, you know, there's a lot of rumors about them sexually. I can't confirm or deny, but there's a lot of rumors about them sexually. You dig? This room is about Obama sexually. These people definitely have an LBGT agenda. You dig? And I want y'all to notice something too. When the Democrats were in office, you know, they had all these jobs, all these boule jack and jail niggas, and also a lot of these immigrants. And that's another thing. There's two types. You got the the non-black immigrants and the black immigrants. You got to watch out for both. On my last show, I talked about some of those non-black immigrants, some of the Hispanic groups coming over, some of the Asians coming over. We're bringing these people in and, you know, they're flipping on us, eating off of us, flipping on us. That's one thing. Another thing we're going to have to look at, family, this is, this is a hard pill to swallow. It's brothers and sisters coming from Africa and the Caribbean. We're going to have to start taking close looks at cats, family. We're going to have to take close looks at some of the people coming in from Africa and the Caribbean. We got some of these cats coming in on some undermined shit. They're undermining the hell out of us. We cape for them. They undermine us. This thing is rampant, family. This is why we cannot be co-signing that immigration shit. We just gonna, I'm just going to have to be flat out. We can't co-sign that. See, they'll get us to co-sign it as if we're all minorities in the struggle. See, we all like, they're, they're people of color. They're minorities. They're suffering. Nobody should suffer. So let's all join hands with them so nobody suffers and they're going to appreciate us. We have never sat back and asked ourselves, all of these, um, let me just talk about the dark ones, the black ones. All these black immigrants who come over, what have they done for us in the last 40 years? How is black immigrants, if we're going to be real, and I'm not shitting on all immigrants. I'm not shitting on all immigrants. I know African immigrants, the second generation African immigrants, who are cool as fuck. I work with a lot of them. I'm not shitting on all of you. I'm not. Trust me, I'm not. What have... African and Caribbean immigrants done to benefit black Native Americans, Native black Americans or American DOS, what have they done in the last 40 years or since the 70s? I want a serious answer on that. I want a serious answer because when I talk about immigration, some of these niggas that pop up, well, I'm black, I'm an immigrant, I'm from the Caribbean. All right, my, what the fuck have you done? What, what have you done since you popping up and jumping into the immigrant pile? What have you done? Constructive for black society. But deny you were black anytime somebody asks you. Was I supposed to go there or not? Besides get offended when somebody call you black. Am I supposed to say that out loud? Especially some of y'all East Africans. Y'all really don't like that shit. Some of y'all Somalian coons. 
the minute somebody call you black, well, that's calling you black is an epithet. Oh, I'm not black. I'm not black. I'm still Somalia. I'm not black. I'm not black. I ain't talking about somebody said that Farrakhan has Caribbean roots. Notice I said in the last 40 years, understand before the 1970s, you had Caribbeans who would come over and they understood what the game was. They understood what the game was. They were riders. They understood what the game was because we had cohesive black communities. So you were forced to deal with black people when you came over from the Caribbean before the 1960s. Do you, let's, let's keep it real. There was no, you couldn't go get a job at no white firm or no shit like that. That wasn't popping. So if you were a person who was of Caribbean descent, you were forced to come into a black neighborhood, so you had to deal with black folks. So a lot of Caribbean brothers, they knew what was up. So they brought that Caribbean spirit, they brought that real energy, and we were, we were prospering to a certain degree, when brothers were coming over and brothers and sisters were coming over from the Caribbean then because you didn't have white zaddy all in your ear offering your ass butter biscuits and jollof. After the 1960s, after the 1970s, when that popped off, they started bringing Africans over and then putting them in the white firms for the sole purpose of undermining black people. When they had to get rid of all those laws that were discriminatory, for black Americans to get jobs and to move into certain places, that's when they started bringing immigrants over and undermining black Americans. So now when they started bringing in Africans during the 1970s, they let them know before they got over here, hey nigga, we don't want no more Marcus Garvey's coming over here now. Because you have some riders coming from, from the Caribbean. We don't want no Bob Marley's and no shit coming over here. Y'all waking motherfuckers up. We don't want nobody coming over here with that desaline spirit. So they started vetting some of the people. They vetted them and made sure that they had a good coon spirit. You understand? They were vetting niggas. So that's why I'm, 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 I'm qualifying it. After the, seven, after the early 70s, when people uh, the, uh, started coming over from African countries and Caribbean countries, when they started getting vetted after the civil rights movement, the whole vibe changed. So I'm saying, what have they done? Besides, many of them will undermine us. I ain't talking about all of them. I'm not 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 talking about all of them. Let's be very clear. But I had an interaction today with a couple of African bedwinches. And that's another thing. When you look at Shea Butter Twitter, most of Shea Butter Twitter, about 85% of them, they're first and second generation African or Caribbean immigrants. Those women, there's a, lot, there's a strong bedwing spirit coming up out of West Africa, particularly West Africa, even, even East Africa too. A lot of those African countries, the women, the, for the most part, the brothers are cool because the black man, you're going to be, you know, you're still a black man, so you're still going to be treated a certain way. Now, understand, there's some Nigerian coons. I seen them up at the Trump thing. You dig? But for the most part, the dudes, they're pretty cool. But the, the, the women, there's a lot of women who come in from, from Africa. They go to the, the UK. They come over here. And the Bedouin spirit is heavy. I know some, they go, they leave West Africa and go to certain parts of Europe and they be trying to have them anchor babies by a white dude. I mean, literally, they go fuck the first white person they find to try to get an anchor baby. I mean, the Bedouin spirit is real sad. Sierra Leone too. But if you look at, we've been, we've been outing a lot of the, yeah, they, they come over and try to claim to be feminist, black feminist. Look, whenever you see somebody on Twitter talking about they're black feminist, look at their background. I'm telling you about 85% of them, West African immigrants. They got them West African names. Look them up, dude. So today, there was a fake rumor going around. Somebody circulated some pictures of Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber was down in South Central LA. He was over there in Imperial Courts down in South Central LA. Where my, where my LA people? All my LA people stand up. Where you at? Let me know you're in here. All my L.A. people stand up. Let me know you're in here. So they were circulating these pictures 
No, he said Tariq don't like nobody. No, 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 no. I love black Americans first. I love the African family. When I go to Africa, I got nothing but love. But I'm, I'm, I don't love people to the point where I'm just going to detriment the rest of society by bringing folks in and not vetting them and letting them undermine us. And what happens, the brothers and sisters in Africa are cool, but when certain people are vetted to come over here, they're vetted to undermine us. And we're going to have to start looking at that. But let me talk about this. So Justin Bieber, there was some pictures of him. He's down in L.A. Let me see if I can pull up some of the pictures. He was down there in um, Imperial Courts in L.A. And just, you know, Justin Bieber has a whole team of people who troll for him and people who try to kind of do things with his image. And I'm talking, y'all know, I, I don't like Justin Bieber at all. I've said this for years. I don't like him. He's racist as fuck. He's been consistently racist. I don't like listening to his music. I don't even like fucking with DJ Khaled that much because Khaled is bringing him in, giving him a cosign, and I think that's foul. I don't like Justin Bieber. When you show that you're a racist, you get around your white friends telling nigga jokes. He's been caught doing that a number of times. He got into a fight with somebody in Ohio, was calling the dude a nigga. I just don't fuck with Justin Bieber. You don't get no pass from me. I don't care about the whole sad puppy dog look. Hey, I'm sorry. I want to do better. Fuck you, nigga. Get on somewhere with that shit. I don't care about your black rapper friends. I don't care. You dig? So they've been trying to butch his image up and kind of clean his racist image up. You know, he, he, was a, he started off as a kid singer but they had to kind of make him a bad boy. So what they would do, they would stage these fights with paparazzi. The shits were so staged, it was ridiculous. It, the shit's so staged, it's a damn joke. So with him, they're trying to do two things. Number one, they're trying to give him some street cred, make it seem like he's a real down-ass dude, make, make him seem like he has an edge or something like that. Okay, come on, man. Hold on, hold on. Let's be deep. Okay, let me find the pictures. So, let me find the pictures. Okay. So, they had him down there. He was down there. This is they got him down there doing push-ups and shit. Nineteen, twenty. Nineteen, twenty. Nineteen, twenty. Nineteen, twenty. Nineteen, Okay. So he's down there. In Imperial Courts, taking pictures. Here's some more pictures. Here's more pictures with the kid. Kim on. On the side. That's dumb watching this nigga grow up. Right here, man. Justin Bieber in a hood, White boy. Seen that shit. Hanging in the hood. All okay. 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 So they're trying to make it seem at first. Like, first somebody lied. One of his people tried to put out a fake story talking about his car broke down in the hood. And he got out there talking to everybody and chopping it up in the hood. First they tried to do that lie. Y'all know I hate Justin Bieber. I don't like him for shit. So they're trying to make it seem like he's, he's a G. Black folks in the hood respect him. He's down there getting love in the hood. And I said, listen, listen to me. You don't go to Imperial Courts down in Watts. No matter who you are, first of all, let alone a Justin fucking Bieber. Bieber. You don't go down there unless your hood paperwork is in order. You don't go down to none of those places on Imperial Highway. You don't go down to Nickerson Gardens. You don't go down to Imperial Court. You don't go over there to Jordan. Now, you're not going in none of those places unless your hood paperwork is in order. Do you understand me? His car didn't break down in no fucking hood. I said, this nigga, done, he didn't threw some money out somewhere. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't threw some money. You ain't going up in there without paying a tax. All right? You didn't threw some money up in there somewhere. Thank you. Do you know some bed winches started attacking me? They were like, well, hey, wait a minute, Tariq. There's one Negro bed wench, African immigrant mammy. Who were another one who works at BuzzFeed, another one who works at Buzz, BuzzFeed. Well, Tariq, how do you know? How do you know that he just wasn't over there hanging out? 
And she lives over in the UK. She's one of these African immigrants over there in the UK, Bedwinch. And on her page, she's all hugged up with zaddies and Asian zaddies. I said, ma'am, hold on. First of all, ma'am, are you caping for Justin Bieber? She's like, yes. Okay. All right. I said, ma'am, do you honestly think that Justin Bieber's car broke down in Imperial Courts and he just started hanging out? Do you think that? Well, it's a possibility. I said, ma'am. Well, I'm a, her name, it's on Twitter. I, I'll retweet her. It's on Twitter. I'll retweet her dumbass. I said, ma'am, I used to live out there. You telling me that I don't know how the politics in my old neighborhood go and you in the UK? And you trying to tell me I don't know how the politics go in a motherfucking neighborhood where I lived? I know that. I used to hang out in that area. I know that area. Yeah, you, you know more about L.A. than me? Really? Really? Motherfucker, I got South Central on my arm. <laughs> you know more about the politics than me? Really? Yeah, you just a hater. He could have been out there. People love him. Stop, stop, stop. Then I explained... Justin Bieber was connected with a church. It's a church out there. It's a church that as is a liaison with the Watts Empowerment Community Center. Y you dig? There's a community center, the Watts Empowerment. And watch, that's another trick bag too. That's another trick bag too. So basically, Justin Bieber, it, it looks like he gave some money to the church and the church gave some money to the Watts Empowerment Center and that was his pass to come on through. A lot of celebrities gives money to the Watts Empowerment Center. A lot of white celebrities. So we got a church pass because you know he's, all, he's doing all that old thing where he's clicked in with the church. And the church is white, by the way. Let's be clear. This church is actually a white church. The church is actually a white church. Also, watch the trick bag. No, this is actually a white church. Now, there are black people who fuck with it, though. But the Watts Empowerment Community Center, that's another thing. Watch that. Just because something is in, is, they got something in South Central and they call it the Empowerment Center. See, they're taking words that we use. The Watts Empowerment Center is run by white people. It's a missionary. It is. Somebody got it right. It's missionaries. They're white missionaries. The Watts Empowerment Center, that's why they don't call it Black Empowerment. The Watts, that's a, it's, a, it's a finesse. That's a finesse. You did? That's a finesse. So the Watts Empowerment Center, it's white people who are running that. It's white people running that. So what they'll do, they take pictures with little Negroes and all this old stuff and get all the donations, pocket it, and buy the Negroes a little Casio keyboard and say, hey, look, we're teaching a music class. Look how great we are. Look how we're empowering these people. It's a finesse. That shit is run by white. You go look at their website. It's a bunch of white people with these kids. It's, a it's just another missionary thing. You understand? So that's who Justin Bieber was clicked up with. He wasn't down there on no G shit, hanging around with no cats. He was down there with some people connected to the church. All right? But the fact that these, and there was a couple other bedwinches who tried to jump in. And one girl, let me, let me look up the name. One of her friends jumped in on some real disrespect when I was talking about Justin Bieber. Hold on one second. And because this is the problem that I have. And this is why we're going to clean up the bullshit. Hold on. Come on, thing. Come on, thing. Hey, why am I. When I, when I need this shit is acting slow. All right. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Hold on. Okay, come on. Twitter. Why is my shit acting slow? Okay. 
All right. Well, we in here heavy tonight. We in here heavy tonight. We are in here heavy. Okay. Let me let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Where is it? Ah. Okay, the girl's name, her name was Ikron or some shit. Ikron, and she's over there in the UK. And she has a homegirl, her her friend, Najma Sharif. Her friend jumped in. Because I was telling this girl, hey, you know, why are you caping for Justin fucking Bieber? Her other African immigrant friend jumped in, Najma Sharif. She hopped on my thing talking about, shut up, dumbass. She's talking to me. She, she just hopped in with the disrespect. And I, I really took offense to that. I'm like, who the fuck are you talking to? Najma Sharif. She's a little bedwench writer or whatever. I think she lives in New York, but she's a Somali. She's a Somali writer. And I checked her. I said, look, you know, that, that type of disrespect. I, I, don't, I don't appreciate y'all Negro bedwenches, African immigrants coming over here, getting all of our benefits that we help your dumb ass with. And then y'all start talking greasy. This is why I don't fuck with that immigration shit, because these people get real slick in the mouth. And this is why native black Americans, we're going to have to pull the plug on that supporting immigrant shit. And that is not to support the Republicans. Let's be clear. That's not to support the Republicans. But too many of these people come over here. We fight for them. We get beat up for them. We help get laws passed. We back black politicians who cape for them like black people are out here caping for the brother in Florida. They're caping for the sister in um, uh, um, Georgia. It's black people supporting these politicians who has immigration on the bill. We're not even getting supported ourselves. We're on some sacrificial slave shit. We're sacrificing shit that's supposed to be for us, for them. Gillum, all these people are helping these immigrant groups. We push for policies for them. Do you understand that all the set-asides and the benefits from the civil rights movement, that was supposed to be for us. Those people came and leapfrogged over us and got all of that. We don't get none of that shit. These people come over and get all the shit that we fight for. Not only that, when they set up shop, we patronize their businesses. So we create a consistent financial um, economy for these people who funnel it out, send it back home or trick it off or go get a zaddy while they sitting up calling us a katas and all this shit. We done funded these people, lifted them up, elevated them, and they go get jobs at BuzzFeed, get around white zaddy, and start writing fucked up shit about how we toxic, kitchen black men, um, street harassment. Those are those women. You look up some of the people behind all that street harassment and all that toxic masculinity. Those are those African immigrant bedwenches, man. Man, we fight to get them preferential treatment in school admissions. Let's keep this thing a buck, man. These folks eat off us heavy. They eat off us. You wouldn't have shit if it wasn't for us fighting for you. Also, when you get harmed, we fight for you. Amadou Diallo, remember him? Was that the dude they put the plunger in his ass? Y'all remember that? We were fighting for that dude. We were putting in work for dude. Do you understand me? When they go, when they get hurt by race soldiers, we ride for them. We out here riding for your ass. When the the plunger was Louima. Okay, okay. 
Which one was Amadou Diallo? Was that the which one? I get those names mixed up. Luima, Abner Luima. Okay, that was the plunger. Abner Luima. Okay, that was the plunger. Amadou Diallo, he, Amadou Diallo, that was the one shot 41 times. Okay, got it. Where was Amadou Diallo from? Where was he from? And where was Luima from? Y'all know these names. Help me out, y'all. Let me get the... 21 shots was Diallo. 41 shots was Diallo. Which one was reaching for the wallet? Luima was Haitian. Okay, that was the plunger. Amadou Diallo was pulling out his wallet and got shot. Okay, that was 41 times. Okay, got it, got it. I got my names mixed up. All right, got my names mixed up. Thank you, guys. Luima was Haitian, yeah, but we were, we were rolling for that dude. We were rocking for him. We were out there heavy protesting for them. You dig? The, the brother who got shot down there in Dallas recently. Remember, the brother when the... The race soldier ran up in the brother's apartment and murked him. He's an immigrant. Remember, he's from like St. Lucia, right? That brother down in um, Dallas, he's from St. Lucia. One of those islands. You understand? I'm going to do the was from Guinea. Okay. He's from Guinea. We rock with both of them. Got it? We rock with both of them. We went out there caping for both of them. The brother down there from St. Lucia. We out here still riding for dude. Well, even though his mama was out there on some forgive shit. His mama was on some forgive shit. And I ain't heard shit from a St. Lucian. I haven't heard shit from no St. Lucians at all. When I mean none, not one. They ain't saying shit. Don't be lost on that. The St. Lucians ain't saying nothing about that. They ain't rocking the boat. They're like, well, shit, oh, well, that's, that's unfortunate, but let me keep my mouth shut. It's us fighting for, the, for justice for that dude. It's us doing that. Hella Selassie advocated for black Americans to live in Ethiopia. Hella Selassie, he was the dude. He was that dude. They were riders. You know? But yeah, they're not. Okay, let me, my my computer's about to die. Hold on one second. Y'all bear with me. Y'all bear with me. My thing is about to die. Hold on one second. Hold on one second, guys. Let me plug my joint up. Y'all bear with me one damn second. Y'all bear with me. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Get this shit popping. All right. Hold on one second, guys. Plug my thing up. It's about to die. Sorry about that, guys. Hate to stop the game. There you go. All right. All right, hope y'all can see me. All right, there we go. All right. Sorry about that. But, um, yeah, Diallo was not Ethiopian. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't. Like a hundred St. Lucians in the internet. Ain't no a hundred St. Lucians. And nigga, you better hold your own nuts. You can call it anti-immigrant. It ain't anti-nothing. This is pro-native black American. So this ain't anti-anything. I don't and if you think it is, I don't give a fuck. How about that? If you think it's anti-immigrant, I don't give a fuck. How about that? Let's be clear. Let me be real clear. Let me be real clear because I don't like the shit that's going on out here. I don't like the shit that's going on out here. We're fighting for too many damn people and it's not reciprocal. 
Everybody wants to be on some we all in this together when it's time for us to fight for them. But when it's time for them to do anything for us, you go out of your way to get around Zaddy and shit on us. So this whole anti-Native Black American thing, that's going to come to a halt because we're going to start pulling the plug. We're going to start letting you hold your own damn nuts. You dig? We're going to let you hold your own fucking nuts. And I don't want to hear all that. Oh, let's not be divisive now. Oh, because when we start talking like that, when we start talking about letting you hold your own damn nuts and fight your own damn battles, oh, we, 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 we all brothers, we all brothers, we all brothers, we all in this together, now we all in this together. No, 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 umduge, you better get your shit right. You better get your shit right. You better get your shit right. We're not going to have y'all getting around white mommy and white daddy and shitting on us every chance you get. I'm sick of that. I'm tired. I'm tired of that. And our politicians not doing anything for us and we got to sit back and sit on our hands while everybody else is coming up on off our backs. And instead of doing anything to reciprocate, you show nothing but disrespect. That shit is done. That shit is done. We're going to start doing like everybody else. We're going to circle our wagons. We're going to let everybody hold their nuts. I want black Americans to start looking out for black Americans first. Get off this whole shit where we got to be kumbaya minorities in the struggle. Ain't nobody doing shit for us. These African nations, they're not really welcoming us with open arms. Malema's talking good now. That's why I fuck with Malema. Malema's talking good now. He's speaking up for black Americans, and I like that. I respect that. But all these nations in Africa, none of them are saying, hey, look, we got some land for Africans in the diaspora. Come on over here. Ghana is talking like that. I'm waiting to see. I'm waiting on Ghana to get that bread right and get that, that, that land right and get their paperwork right, and we'll come through. Ghana is, but let's get it popping, Ghana. And look, and shout out to my Jamaican brother. Let me say, I've been to Jamaica. I got a lot of love in Jamaica. I got a lot of love for Jamaica. Shout out to Arden Plumbing. Shout out to my mother. Arden, I'm going to talk to you too because I got to get some plumbing done in my house. And I want to know, I want to talk about some of the, the shit that they be putting on the paperwork, jacking up the prices. I'm going to talk to a real plumber to let me know if they trying to finesse. Because some of this shit they trying to charge me for. You know, trying to charge me like $2,000 to paint one wall and all this old shit. And they got to tear the wall out and put a pipe here and put a pipe there and all this old shit. So I got to holler at you, my man, Arden. No doubt, brother. I email you, brother. Shout out to Arden Plumbing if you're down there. And my man is in Dallas, right? Arden, you're in Dallas? You St. Lucian, but you identify. And look, much love to y'all, man. Much love to the St. Lucians. We're rocking with you. We rock with you. But I, one thing, I'm just not going to tolerate these fucking bed wenches getting around these, getting up in these white publications, doing everything they can to undermine us. I ain't with that shit no more. And everybody, we've been talking about this one bed wench who put out that story with BuzzFeed talking about why aren't. Why, how come the hip, the, the Me Too movement ain't targeting hip hop artists because of their sexuality, their, their, their sexual um, indiscretions or some shit she wrote. And that was a Negro bedwinch, African immigrant over there at BuzzFeed writing that bullshit. Well, enough is enough, man. Fuck that. Enough is enough. Yeah, people leeching off us, man. We, I'm tired of that whole John Lewis, oh, Lord, I got beat so that you can do better in life. No, 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 no. I'm not being a sacrificial slave no more. I'm not going to be a sacrificial slave no more. We already know how the Hispanic, many of them, the coons from those communities come over. You know, we bring them in, we lift them up, and then all of a sudden they join the alt-right. Do you know how many Hispanics... And Asians are in the alt-right. We get our politicians, we back our politicians to create laws to fund them. They come over here, set up shop in our communities. We fund them even more. They literally eat off us every single day for generations after generations. 
they get their weight up and they start joining the alt-right and supporting Peter Liang and all this old shit. And we still ain't caught on. And some people were talking about, well, we need to support the Hispanic immigration because they're, they're locking up the kids and they, they're separating kids and family. And this is a, a moral thing. Hold up. We ain't doing no moral thing no more. That whole, we got to take the moral high road. No. We don't have to take the moral high road. No, 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 no. We don't have to take the moral high road. They hold their own nuts. They're going to have to hold their own nuts. We're not doing that moral high road thing because that moral high road thing is basically they want us to save them for the, from themselves. They want us to save them from themselves. Don't talk to me about no moral high road with the kids being separated. Yeah, that's horrible. That's a bad thing. But understand, those Hispanics who voted for Trump, they caused that. Do you know how many Hispanics voted for Trump, especially down there in Florida? You sat up here and voted for this dude against the interest of your ethnic group because you thought you were going to be team white supremacy. He went around and flipped and got your ethnic groups all separated, locking them up. And y'all want us to come to the rescue to fight for you? Hell no. No. You made your mess. You're going to clean that up. No, thank you. I ain't taking no moral high road. We told y'all not to vote for him. We told y'all not to fuck with them white supremacists anyway, and you were team white supremacy. Y'all never supported, y'all never, um, y'all never apologized for Zimmerman. You never apologized for Yanez killing Philando Castile. They never denounced Zimmerman. Then all of a sudden, y'all want to roll over here and talk about the moral high road? No, 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 no. No. <clears throat> Down in Texas, too, exactly. Somebody said we should let Trump win. L listen, how has Trump affected us in a negative way? Black people, how has Trump affected black people in a negative way? Trump, they ain't done nothing to us but just talk the same shit they've been talking. I'm going to tell y'all something, black people. We are more in danger when the Democrats are in power. You know why? Because the Democrats, the white supremacists, whenever they have a backlash, they always take the backlash off out on us. They take the backlash out on us. And when race soldiers and all of these white supremacist groups start taking their angst and their backlash out on us, the Democrats don't do anything to protect us. We, we get these fuckers in office, we push for them, we push for these immigrants, we go out and vote for them, and they sit up and let us get slaughtered and don't do anything to protect us. They don't do shit to protect us. But build more jails, they're no better than the, the, the Republicans. And I'm not saying vote Republican at all. But we can't keep playing this game of good cop, bad cop with these people. And we got to make these fucked up choices between syphilis and gonorrhea. That's what we're doing. We're making a choice between syphilis and gonorrhea. We got to sit up and be like, well, gonorrhea, it don't hurt that bad. Syphilis, oh, shit, dude, you dick be itching. But, you know, we got to make this dumbass choice. No, I ain't choosing none of them. If you ain't talking about anything that's going to heal my situation, I don't need you. I just do what I'm doing. I'll save gas money. You understand? We have to look at it in those terms. It's a lose-lose situation. More black people got killed under Obama than any other time in this history, in the, in the history of this, this country. More black people got killed under Obama. And with these white supremacist groups, they're looking to start looking for a reason to attack us. And that's my thing. I, I'm not voting for nothing unless y'all do something about these white supremacists attacking us unless you commit to doing something. Say, hey, we're going to protect black people. 
on this level. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all not doing that because if y'all get elected, we're going to eat that. We're going to eat that. They're already trying to get at us. Did y'all see the video? I posted a video. Let me see if I can find it. It was a sister in um, South Carolina. Some couple of suspected white supremacists tried to get up in her house. And that sister had a gun on their ass. That sister had that thing. And bust one on dude. Hold on, let me see if I can find that. Y'all bear with me. Let me see if I can find that. Hold on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me see if I can find it. Hopefully I got it. Hopefully I got it. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I got it. Hold on one second. Let me see if I got it. Y'all bear with me. Let me see. I probably... Let me see if I can find uh, hold on, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Let me see if I got it. Good job. Yeah, this, and this is why, sister, here it is, here it is. This happened in South Carolina. Check this out. Norfolk Circle in Anderson County is usually a quiet place, but not early this morning when Ashley Jones heard people outside her home, followed by banging on her front door. See him in this home security video. She called 911 and... I went to the side of my bed and I grabbed our gun. Before this mother of three girls knew it, a man was forcing his way inside. Banging again, bang, bang, bang. So then he kicks the door in. As soon as he kicks the door in and tries to take a step in my house, that's when I shot him and he ran off. Something just came over me and like I got calm, like my heart slowed down and I got calm and I just got focused. Deputies were on scene right away, arresting him and a woman outside. This mother says the incident has left her kids scared, but she's thankful she had protection. Because if I didn't have any kind of weapons, I don't know what I would have did. I mean, that guy was kind of big, so I wouldn't have been able to fight him off. I've never thought I would have to shoot that gun, Ooh. ever. There you go. So Ashe to that sister. That sister had the spirit of Ogun, and I'm glad she's safe. I'm glad they didn't try to finagle a reason to charge her for protecting herself. Shout out to that sister. That's how y'all got to be. Y'all better be willing to protect your family at all cost. These two crazed, mayonnaise, militias coming up in your house in the middle of the night, and you got your babies up in the house. Man, no telling what they were about to do. No telling what those crazy ass people were about to do out there. You in the house with your babies, man? Come on. These, these people feel real bold. They're very emboldened, so they think they can get away with anything. You did? And uh, speaking of shooting, you know, um, that shooting out there in Kentucky at the Kroger that happened last week. That Gregory Bush guy, first, we, we know that he tried to go to a church first. And what's interesting, the church was locked, but they talked to one of the, I, I want to say the ministers or the deacons or whatever. And they they talked to him about what happened because they locked the church and the minister, the, the brother, the old black man in the church, because he was going to try to kill everybody in that church. But he ended up going to the Kroger store and killed a, a couple of black people. They interviewed the brother from the church, and it was an old elderly black man. And the black man said, he said, well, he was knocking on the door. I, I, I saw him the security camera later. I didn't see him, though. But the thing is, if I had a saw him, I probably wouldn't let him in like we do everybody. So the Lord, which it was Ogun that saved your old ass. It was Ogun that saved him. Because they, he said that if he had a saw him, he would have let him in. You did? Now understand, when he went over to Kroger, he shot one elderly black man and he shot an elderly black woman. And you keep hearing about this shootout that he got into with somebody else. Well, the thing is, there was another black couple that he tried to kill. There was another black couple 
that he tried to kill. This was a younger black couple. You understand? Listen to me. The dude at Kroger, he tried to kill another black couple. It was a brother and his wife, but he was younger. And the brother had his gun. And the brother started busting back on his ass. That's the thing that saved the brother and his wife. That young brother had enough sense to have his thing on him. You dig? The media kind of downplays that. They downplay the fact that the black dude was a hero. You haven't heard that. They've been, they've been hiding that for some reason. They haven't told you that. Dominic is a brother named Dominic. What's Dominic's last name? Look, Google the brother's name. Yeah, they ain't telling you that part because they don't want to give black folks any ideas. They don't want to put that narrative that black folks are out here stopping these goddamn white supremacists themselves. They don't want to show you that. They don't want to tell you that. That black people out here stopping these fuckers themselves. Yeah, it was a black dude who was busting on that white supremacist and, and, and got him to back up off everybody. You dig? Yo, the NRA real quiet. All that, you, normally the NRA loves the whole the good guy with a gun stop the bad guy with a gun. They love doing that. Anytime there's a white school shooting, they always point out some security guard who shot back. Like, hey, look at this guy. It's a good guy with a gun. And if it wasn't for the good guy with a gun, it could have gotten worse. They love running that bullshit. Yeah, Domin Dominic Rosier, that's his name, right? Dominic Rosier. Look him up. Look that brother up. Just like with the sister who bust on the cat coming in her house. They've been kind of low-key about that. They don't want to show that. And even in the comments section of some of the places where the video is posted, you can see the mayonnaise supremacists in the chat rooms. Well, was it legal for her to shoot him like that? I mean, did he actually enter the house? Oh, they're, they're trying to find a way to make the sister guilty. Well, did he technically cross over the threshold? I mean... You know, they they really trying to, you know, nitpick to see, you know, there's a way they can flip it on that system. You understand? See, the thing is, they move the goalposts when it comes to us. When it's a black person doing something and they get punished by a white person, they always justify it. If a black person does something and the victim is non-black, or the so-called victim is not black. All of a sudden, it's a moral thing. The black person wasn't supposed to do it. All this, just like this video of this school fight. Let me show y'all this. This black teacher with this Hispanic student, and this Hispanic student is trying to intimidate this brother. And this brother kind of put hands on him a little bit. Look. You see, he just hit him with a ball. He just hit this brother. This is a 64-year-old black man. Black man tries to walk off. He's walking off. The kid is standing up there talking greasy. And this is just how it's filmed. I didn't film it like this. He's talking greasy still. It's all up in the brother's face. You dig? All up in the black man. This is an elderly black man. And right now the brother said, look, fuck this job. The brother's in his mind like, the hell with this job. This job ain't worth this. I'm sitting up here getting talked greasy to. So the brother's about to unleash. And the dude is just, the, the Hispanic cat is up here talking greasy. job anyway, so let me just go ahead and go all out. 
Resting him. Let me take this off. Sorry about that. Okay. So they ended up arresting that brother. And I see a lot of people talking about, oh, the teacher shouldn't have done that. And even in the news reports, they're like, oh, the, the poor child, the victim, the child, the poor child, the victim. Oh, the child. He victimized this child. Give me a fucking break. There's videos of black children getting their asses swooped by white teachers, by white school officers, and they justify them shits every single time. When black kids like that little black girl got her ass whooped by that big white officer in class, this girl was sitting at her desk, he body slammed her and drug her all across the floor. All these mandate supremacists was talking about it was justified. They all said it was justified dragging that little girl and slamming her. Uh, it's always justified when it's our kids. Now, when a black person does that to somebody who, who's, he has to defend him. That old black man has to defend himself from that dude. The dude hit him once and up in his face, still threatening him. You dig? So these people are real funny style. So they said they said there was a GoFundMe. It looked like one of the students. You know, I don't like promoting anything where it's not the person directly affected because sometimes you get a lot of people trying to run a run a little scam thing going on. So, but we do need. To, I'm, I'm going to find out who the brother is so cats can look out for him because you don't deserve you. That's an old black dude. If somebody in your face trying to punk you out and intimidate you. That ain't cool. You dig? But um, again, this is, that's another result of us. This is what happens. We cape for people. We cape for immigration. And this is what happens. They come over and you all types of niggas and they swing it on elderly black people. You understand? And like I said, black folks, we, we cape for these groups who come over. Like with that caravan they talking about coming over. I ain't gung-ho about that caravan coming over because once they get over here, Especially in SoCal, they're gonna start joining all of these, these, these gangs that's associated with white supremacist groups. Do you know how many Latino gangs in LA are clicked in with white supremacist groups? Those the Serenos Thirteen, they're clicked in with the Aryan Nation. The the Nazi Lowriders are clicked in with the Aryan Nation. Um, the Mexican Mafia, all of these folks, man, they're clicked in with them against us. You did. And with the brother getting getting in that situation like that, I mean, they said he's the band teacher. Now, I heard that they were messing with that brother for a long time. That's not the first time those kids were rocking with him and messing with him like that. You dig? Man. But yeah, if his pension is gone, we need to look out for him and make sure he's good. Man. But yeah, man, look, look at all these groups who come in. Th this is what we get, family. This is what we get when we, we cape for people. And this is how we get paid back. I'm going to ask again. Besides people trying to jump on us and click up with other white supremacist groups against us and shoot our babies, shoot our families. What do we get out of people coming over here immigrating? What do black people get? We're going to ask that question and always ask that question. What have black people gotten for all of these minority groups coming over here, integrating, not integrating, but immigrating over here? What have black Americans received? How has that benefited black Americans at all? Not a goddamn thing. Just keep it 100. 
besides us getting beat up by these people and exploited, beat up in their nail salons, beat up in the schools. Our, our black, old black teachers are getting beat up in the schools. And then when I see all these people clicked in with the alt right throwing up the little white supremacist hand signs, and then y'all telling me to vote because immigration is a moral issue that we need to stand behind. I'm like, why? Because it's moral. Moral for who? And it's not really helping us. These people are coming over against us. Well, it's going to let Trump damn win. Well, shit. What's the difference between white supremacists behind Trump and the white supremacists behind the Democrats? What's the difference? We're not getting nothing. Not only we're not getting nothing, we're getting treated worse when we help these folks. It's not, it's beyond non-reciprocal. It's detrimental to us. People coming over, fucking us up and disrespecting. And not just them, other immigrants from African countries too. The bedwinches are coming over from Somalia, Sierra Leone, Nigeria. The bedwinches are coming over, clicking up with Zaddy, writing all these fucked up articles about us, helping push laws against us. You got the lovies and all these people out here who can't stand black society. Native black American society, yet they eat off us and they get those jobs at BuzzFeed and all these places being the voice of black America and they ain't even from here. You understand the game that's, that's popping? We got to say enough is enough. It's up to us to trim the fat and cut the bullshit down. Yeah, those lovies, those people who basically get paid to undermine black society. Yeah, they start, anytime they got a street harassment movement and some shit where they're trying to get a law against black folks, black Americans, that's who they bring out. Because they don't have no sentimental attachment to us, so they'll throw us under the bus with no conscience or nothing. It doesn't bother them at all to throw us under the bus. They're like, I ain't, I, those are Akanas. These niggas ain't us. And we up here on some kumbaya shit with them. And I ain't talking about brothers and sisters from the diaspora. I'm, I'm specifically talking about the immigrants who've been, been vetted. Those immigrants, they get vetted when they get over here. So they'll turn on the people out there. A lot of them were coons in their own country. Do you understand? A lot of them were coons in Nigeria. A lot of them were coons in Kenya. A lot of them were coons over there. And the folks over there weren't really fucking with them. That's why their family had to get the hell on up out of there and leave. You understand? So we got to circle our wagons, family. And I want black Americans to understand. You have a very unique history. Don't let anybody compare their struggle compare their history to yours. See, black Americans, we get beat down so much, we forget who the fuck we are. We are unique in black America. Black Americans are very unique. We've done shit that nobody in the world has done. Black America, we've created shit. We've withstood shit. We've been the moral fiber. We've let people rise off our backs. Black people over here, we fueled a global economy. We built a nation, the most powerful nation, off our backs for free. We've been the moral compass of the world, us over here. Black Americans, that's why you go anywhere, motherfuckers trying to emulate us. Motherfuckers wearing the shit we wear, doing the dances we wear, rapping like we do. We are, like Claude Anderson said, we are exceptional people. Nobody can compare themselves to us. Everybody eats off us. All these other immigrants come in and eat off us. If it were not for us, these folks would be somewhere on their ass. We got to stop letting folks eat off us and then turn around and try to mistreat us. They're going to have to put some respect on our name. We're going to have to let them know because if it weren't for us, they couldn't get none of these goodies and benefits. They ride our backs to do it. That's why whenever they have some kind of march for immigration or some kind of march for LBGT rights, they got to bring us out there. They have to bring us out there because they can't justify saying that they've been mistreated. 
based on your sexual preference, based on you coming from another country by choice. Do you understand that? We didn't come here by choice. We're the only non-immigrants here. We're not immigrants. We are not immigrants. We built this bitch. We are not immigrants. Do you understand that? They're going to have to put some respect on our name. So this is why they bring us out. They have to align themselves with us when it's time to get the goodies. That's the only way to justify getting the goodies is sitting your ass up here with us standing next to you, which we got to stop that. That's why they got to get those African bedwinches to stand with them and act like they one of us. No. They go get some of those bedwinches from, from West Africa to come over there and stand with them. Like, look, me and this African American, that ain't no African American. I smell Joloff. <laughs> No, I smell butter biscuits and jollof. They ain't, she ain't one of us. You understand? Just like Claude Anderson said, uh, black people should abandon affirmative action because of affirmative action, nobody can justify getting it unless we're attached to it. Affirmative action was made specifically for us. Nobody else can justify getting no damn affirmative action because affirmative action was corrective action that for people who were enslaved and for people who went through Jim Crow. Asians didn't go through no damn Jim Crow. They were not enslaved. Hispanics didn't go through Jim Crow. They were not enslaved. And um, African immigrants who came over, they were not enslaved. You dig? We got to stop people... We gotta stop them from latching on to our shit. We gotta stop these people from latching on and comparing themselves to us, and then they get the shit that's supposed to be designed for us. We gotta stand up as a whole, as a group, and say, no, we want something for black Americans. We want something for black Americans. We want a commitment to black Americans. We want you to do something for black Americans. We ain't with the minority kumbaya shit no more. Say Andrew Schultz threw at the white power sign. Nobody's shocked. Nobody's shocked. That's how we're going to have to start rolling. We could, Claude Anderson said, let them have affirmative action. We don't get nothing out of it no way anymore. We don't get nothing out of it. Everybody else is eating off affirmative action. If we publicly bail out of affirmative action, affirmative action will collapse. If black people say we don't want affirmative action, it will collapse. We have to say reparations. Nobody else can stake a claim to reparations, see? That's why we got to use our words correctly. We got to say, hey, look, we need a reparation thing going on here. Fuck an affirmative action. We got to stop that minority thing. We got to specify black Americans, black Americans. And not these old sometimey niggas who claim black when it's convenient. You got a lot of niggas who claim black when it's convenient, but them East Indians, they don't march for nothing. They don't march for nothing. Not, not East Indians, I mean East um, Africans. They don't march for nothing. You dig? They can't wait to get over here and kiss white ass. You dig? I'm tired of um, fighting and caping for people who don't respect us and who, who turn around and talk greasy to us. I'm good. When we, when we go over there to these countries, we show respect as you should. You're supposed to show respect. I show respect to African nations when I go over there. I show them the utmost respect. But these people come over here and they get comfortable around these white supremacists and they feel like they can disrespect Native Black Americans. That's going to stop. We're going to stop that shit. We're going to make these people, everybody's going to have to put some respect on our name. Yes, we're setting a black agenda. I'm telling you how we need to get down. Because we spread ourselves thin trying to cape for every damn body. And we got to start being exclusive. We got to start excluding people. We got to start saying, well, I don't rock with you. But hey, man, we all struggling. Yeah, but you know, I'm looking at your track record and you haven't done nothing to help me. And this thing has been one-sided. Well, you're being divisive. Well, damn it, I'll be divisive. I'll be that then. Because I don't need you standing around getting everything off me and you ain't, you ain't helping as a matter of fact, you, you, you're hindering me. So if that's the vice, well, goddammit, so be it. But I'm not caping for you. Go out there on your fucking own and cape. 
Go out there and challenge white supremacy on your own and see how that works. Because most of these niggas, again, a lot of these people, these immigrants come over, they come from a coon stock. That's why over in their countries, it's a million of them, 20 white people, what 20 white people whooping all one million of their ass. So that shows the mentality and spirit that they already have. You got a small group of white supremacists whooping your ass. And then you come over here with that cape and fazzati spirit. You're not going to challenge them here. You're not going to challenge all these white supremacists, but you can't challenge the 20 at your, at your country that's taking over, who own everything. You can't even do anything about them 20. You too scared to raise up and knock them motherfuckers out. Out of fear. That, that kills me. How are you in a country is 20 white supremacists in your country whooping your ass? You, you, you already living in a shack. You, you living in a shanty town. You ain't got nothing to lose. But I, I don't know if you're waiting on some magic butter biscuits that's supposed to be coming. I don't know what it is. You dig? Yes, now it's about to be the Chinese. And, and a shout out to this brother. I saw a video in Angola. Um, a Chinese dude called his African brother a monkey and that brother slapped the living shit out of that Chinese dude. Shout out to him. You know Angola, that's where they got a lot of cats from the, from the Haitian Revolution. They got, they got the Africans from there. The Angolans, that's where Capoeira come from. They slap game and kick ass game has been on fleek for about four, five centuries. That brother slapped the fire out of that dude. I wish I had the clip on here. That slap was a monster. Remember, that's where Capoeira comes from. Them Angolans were not fucking around back in the day. I thought it was from Kenya, but I heard it was from Angola. Because I think the brother was speaking Portuguese. Yeah, I saw that Chinese police down in, uh, they got a police force down in South Africa. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Man. And Golans were sent to Brazil. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Man. Anyway, let me get up out of here, man. I got work to do and all that good stuff. But look. Well, we got a lot of people in here. Everybody, y'all following me, y'all y'all hit the subscribe button, first of all. Everybody hit that subscribe button right there. All, it's damn near 5,000 of you. Hit that subscribe button, all right? Stacey Abrams is not married. Trust me, I, I was looking for a husband. I'm trying to see what's going on, and I've, I have not seen her in any pictures with a man that looked like it was any way remotely intimate. I have not seen her in any pictures with no man. So I've seen her with some women, though, that, that looked a little intimate. But, you know, everybody hit the like button right there. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that like button, family. Come on, y'all. We got 823 likes. Let's get it to 1,000 likes right now. We got 10 seconds to get it to 1,000 likes on that button. Hit that like button right now. We can get a thousand in ten seconds. Let's get it. My sister's a carpet monster. Hilarious. There you go. We're almost there. But understand, man, they got an agenda for us. They got an agenda. And, you know, look, look at who the people are that they fund. They're funding these people. All right, there we go. We had a thousand likes. Everybody, y'all see right below there, hit that Patreon. Click that Patreon link family and become a Patreon, you dig, so we can bring this hot fire, hot information to you, hit that Patreon link, you dig, and we still, speaking of South Africa, we still got those Malema shirts, shout out to my man Arden Plumbing, if you're down there in Dallas and you need some plumbing, go to my man at Arden Plumbing down there, and again, family, you don't have to vote. If they don't have an agenda for you, we're not going to be out here voting just for the sake of voting, caving for all these other groups that's just going to turn around and shit, us, shit on us in, in, anyway. These people are going to shit on us. They are not helping us. Nobody can name when they have helped us. 
They don't have a pro-black coalition. They're not really trying to challenge white supremacy. That's another thing. Because I've asked people, what are these immigrant groups doing for us? Well, we all under white supremacy. They ain't challenging white supremacy, though. They're not challenging white supremacy. They don't say shit about white supremacy. They get around white zaddy and start sucking ass. You dig? Stop generalizing Africans. You're not the same. That's why I said that you're not the same. What you're going to have to start doing is listening, though, brother. Ibrahima, bra, you're going to have to start listening, brother, because I said that a million times that you're not the same. But you know y'all got some coons over there. Let's stop it. You know you got coons over there, and these coons get vetted to come over here. Thank you, D. Tubman. Hit that Patreon link, family. I've been to Africa many times. Sent money over there. I got a lot of love in Africa, but I'm talking about the coons from who get over here. The coons and the bedwinches who get over here. You did? Okay, all my Atlanta people, don't forget to get your tickets to join us. Mink Slide. Thank you very much, Samantha. Get your tickets to join Mink Slide live in concert in Atlanta. We're going to have a good time. December 22nd at the Center Stage Theater is Mink Slide, me, Mink Slide, and the APX. We're going to be funking out. Get your tickets right now at minkslide.com. Can your kids come? Yes, they can. We're not going to be doing anything nasty or sexual. It's going to be a good concert. We're going to be rocking out. Bring your kids. You can bring your kids to see Mink Slide. You're going to have a good time. You dig? Go to minkslide.com, ladies and gentlemen. And fly in. I love you too, Jacqueline. Fly in. If you're in Texas, fly in. You're in Nashville, fly in. You're in South Carolina, fly into Atlanta. Get your tickets, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let me get up out of here, man. Y'all have a good night, man.